explain in any way other than it's real. It is the way it seems. And in your book, you have also mentioned about how you are able to induce a robotic experience voluntarily. <coughs> uh, what are some of the techniques to do that? Well, you really don't need techniques. Techniques are tools that you use. What you need to do is get your intent focused properly on what it is you want to do, clearly. You also need to have to focus on why you want to do it. What's, what's your motivation? Those two things are important. Then you have to get out of your intellect, set that aside, and work only from your being level. And of course, you have to get rid of all the noise. If you do that, if you can do those things, then you just have an intent to be somewhere else, and there you are. It's like you teleport around in the non-physical. Your intent is the thing that, that makes it work. So when you're able to do those things, it's just a matter of shifting your intent. So it's like, <clears throat> it's like here's a data stream defining this reality that we call physical. And I get that data stream, I'm conscious, it's not a body. I get that data and I interpret it as this world. Well, now I just reach over here and get another data stream. Now I'm in a different world. You see, it's just that simple. You just connect to a different data stream. You let go of this one, connect to a different one. <coughs> so it's, it's something that you can do in a fraction of a second. It doesn't take technique. It doesn't take process. It doesn't even have to be quiet. You can do it while you're having a conversation with somebody. It's just a shift of your intention. That's all it is. <clears throat> so it's, it's a simple thing that anybody can do easily if they can control that jabbering consciousness, if they can get rid of the noise, if they can get rid of the intellect, if they can exist at the being level, if they can have a clear intent and a clear focus of why they're doing it. If they can have all that and hold all that, now a lot of people can get that, but only for seconds, and then it's gone. You know, thoughts come in, judgment comes in, the intellect jumps in, but to get that state and hold it is what's difficult. So there's lots of ways of, that people have come up with, with trying to help them get in that state. But none of the, none of the tools, none of the techniques that are used are fundamental. It's not like there's any prescription. Oh, you do, you know, this technique, this, this, and the other, and then suddenly you're out of body. It doesn't work that way. You have to learn to control your own consciousness. And maybe control isn't the right word. You need to stop muddying your own consciousness. So it's not really a thing you need to learn. It's a thing you need to unlearn. It's a thing you need to stop doing. So being able to access other realities is a natural thing for consciousness to do, but we block it, we get in the way. Our intellect gets in the way. The noisy mind gets in the way. <coughs> if I had to say where to start, I'd tell everyone to start with meditation because meditation helps you quiet your mind helps you get the noise out of your mind. It gets a pretty good instruction about how to go in a body. The first thing that I would ask people to do would be to start to meditate and to learn to get to a point that I call point consciousness. That is, you meditate and you let go of your sense perception so you're no, no longer operating on sense data. It doesn't mean that you can't look at sense data. You can, if the phone rings, you'll hear it ring. Or if cars drive by on the street outside where you're meditating, you may hear the, the engines or if the horns honk, you'll hear that, but you don't operate on it. And for the most part, you don't really hear, see, feel, taste, smell, anything. It's gone. But if something happens, you'll hear it, but you don't say, oh, what's that? And then get upset because it's bothering you or anything else, you just let it go. You don't, you don't operate on it. So when you let go of all of your sense data, you're no longer in this reality frame because that's, what, that's your data stream. So you're letting go 
of your data stream. Okay? When you do that, you are just a point of consciousness floating in the void. I call that point consciousness. So you're aware that you exist and you're not really aware of anything else. No thoughts are coming through your mind, no feelings, um, nothing, just blank existing. Okay, so that is the beginning state. Now, many people, that's the end state. That's what they do for meditation. And that's, you know, they get there, they're like, done, they made it. Well, in, from my experience, that's just the beginning state. Once you get the point consciousness, now you can use your intent to do most anything else. From that point consciousness state, you're much more able to uh, heal. You're much more able to remote view, to do any of those sorts of things, gather data from databases. So that point consciousness state is a good state to be in. Sometimes people have trouble getting there. Mostly people can get there, but only for short periods of time. So you just have to practice to where you can get to that state and hold it, stay in that state, unperturbed for as long as you want to. An hour, two hours, however long you want it to work. After that, it's just a matter of reaching out for some other data stream. And the basic advice would be to always engage. You see, remember before we talked about the larger cast of system would, uh, can send you data. Other IUFCs can send you data and you can make up data yourself. All of it is information. Therefore, all of it's real. But you never get a tag, which is which. So you have to stop judging. Stop trying to figure that out. Just accept whatever data you get and, and engage it. Most of us who get into that meditation state end up just sitting passively and waiting for something to happen. We become voyeurs, just going to sit there and say, okay, here I am. You know, give me something to work with. Well, it's not like that. You will get things to work with, but you will tend to brush them off. Oh, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, you know, I just see colored lights. Well, if you see a colored light, become one with the colored light. Enter the colored light. Be the colored light. Connect to it. Uh, feel the colored light. So that's what I mean by engage it. Don't just sit and look at it and dismiss it. If you see something silly like a pink rabbit, you know, sitting by a six foot tall daisy or something and, uh, don't say oh, something out of a cartoon. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So you brush that aside because that's not what you're expecting. You're expecting something impressive, you see. But if you go over and engage that rabbit, that rabbit will probably be a portal that takes you someplace else. So you see a doorway or a light, just a speck of light. Well, go to the speck. As you get closer and closer, it'll get bigger and bigger, and then you can dive through it. You say, um, <clears throat> engage, always engage everything. Don't judge that anything is insignificant and ought to be tossed out. So that's the first big mistake that people make. Another problem people have is fear. If you are fearful, you will find fearful things there. Here, you can manifest things with your intent. We talked about that earlier. There, you manifest things with your intent quickly, very quickly. So if you have fear, what you're afraid of will manifest very quickly. If you, uh, you know, want to manifest other things, you can too. If you are in that out-of-body state, you say, oh, I'd like to have a cherry vanilla ice cream cone. Well, there it is. You can manifest it just like that, and you can lick that cone, and it'll be the best. You can taste it. The taste will be rich and you know, really full of flavor. It'll be the best cherry vanilla ice cream you've ever tasted. So you can manifest things easily there. Here, it takes a lot more effort, a lot more focus to modify probability. There, you don't have a big rule set that you know, fixes everything. You don't have to work within a structure of a rule set. There's very few rules. So it's easy for your mind to manifest. So if you're fearful, you'll find fearful things. If you're fearful, 
you'll wonder about that portal. What's that? Okay, there's a circle of light, but if I dive through it, what's on the other side? Maybe something out there is going to get me, or maybe it won't be nice, you see. So you either will be too afraid to dive through the portal, or you'll dive through the portal and you'll meet some monster or something ugly or whatever, because that's your fear. You'll manifest that fear, and you won't have a good time. <clears throat> so the system is set up to keep people who aren't ready from really going there. So if you're a very fearful person, you may try and try and try to go out of body, but you probably won't get there. Because if you begin, something scary will happen that will chase you away. And now you'll even be more scared the next time. So it just it becomes a block. So that's another thing. Learn to go to point consciousness and hold it. Two, get rid of your fear. Get rid of your ego and get rid of all your expectations. If you've read a book like Bob Monroe's about out of body, don't expect to see, hear, and feel the things he did. You cannot have Bob Monroe's experience. You have to have your own experience. So you need to just be open. No expectations. Okay? If you engage everything, your own experience will start to develop. The system sets out that rabbit or that, uh, that point of light or whatever just for your use if you choose to engage it. If you don't engage it, you're not ready. If you engage and you're fearful, you're not ready. You see, so you can get the point consciousness, but that's just step one. You do that first. Then you have to work on your fear. As your fear goes away, the outer body becomes easier and easier. Working out of your being level becomes very natural and easy. As long as you have fear, you tend to work out of your intellect because that intellect has to make you safe. It has to keep you from making poor decisions that will get you in trouble, like diving into portals where there might be monsters on the other side. That's what, the, that's what your intellect will do. Your intellect will, will find all those things that you're frightened of and manifest them in some kind, of a, some kind of a way. So those are the things. So it's not a matter of learning something new. It's a matter of getting rid of something old, getting rid of the fear, getting rid of the ego. And again, you have to have a good reason for it. If you are trying to go out of body because you want to fly on over, uh, you know, to the girls' locker room at the gym next door, and, you know, and see who's there. You know, that's not a good purpose. So the system doesn't support it. So you just sit there and nothing will happen. Well, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, force that on your own. It's just going to be a lot harder. And by the time you get to the point where you could force it, you're not interested in doing that kind of thing anymore. So it all kind of takes care of itself. <clears throat>